Please welcome your host, Dion Taylor. Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. Now, the preview feature that is called Case Handling Time is actually uh, one that I'm really, really excited about because it allows us to track the total amount of time that was spent on a customer service case. Now, I've heard this in the past, a lot of people asking for this, so I'm super excited about it. About it. I'm gonna show you how this works, how you can enable it, and also how everything works under the covers. Let's go ahead, take a look right after this. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what this looks like. And after that, I'm gonna talk about configuration and how this actually works under the hood because it is going to be different depending on the type of app that you're gonna be using. And what I'm talking about here are single session apps versus multi-session app, right? You might or might not know that customer service workspace is a multi-session app and a single session app is, for example, customer service hub or any uh, custom model driven apps that you have created because we currently cannot create multiple session apps ourselves. So keep that in mind. All right, so let me just go ahead and click on uh, this case to open it up. And what you should see in a second here, let's just give it a second, is that my my counter, I, I don't know what else to call it. Let's just give it a second here while this loads. Here you go. Here is my, my counter, my tracker, whatever we want to call this. So what is happening right now is that I can actually, if I click here on my time, I can see the time that has been passed as I'm working on this particular case, right? So the other thing that you'll see here is time log. So what I'm going to be able to do is I can also manually enter time in here, right? And I can put a duration in and a reason in, and I can go ahead and save that. And you can also see here activities. So for example, if I would create a new activity, let's just say I'm going to do a task and we all know that tasks has durations on there as well, right? So 30 minutes here for a task, I'm going to say a task with stuff for me to do. I'm going to go ahead and save and close that. Let's just give it a second. And that is actually going to be updated here under activities. So I'm going to go ahead and complete that. I'm going to close my task. And let's just go ahead and refresh that. And now you can see right for activities, I have 30 minutes now. So it's doing a couple of different things here, right? It's counting all of my activities based on that duration on those activities. If I have any time logs, it will, right? Those are those manual time logs that I have. It will also add those to my total time. And then I can see the automatic, automatic time that's also been tracked. If I click here on show history, you can currently see that there is no automatic time records in here yet. I did not create any custom or manual, sorry, time tracking logs. And then you do see that I have one activity, which is 30 minutes of my time, which brings my total time to 31 minutes and 48 seconds. So this is what the agents will see. Now let's talk a little bit about what is happening under the covers, right? Or under the hood, however we want to call that. So first thing I want to explain, and let me actually just go to a different app here. We're going to go from the customer service workspace to the customer service admin app, because this is where we can actually enable this. So here we are in a customer service admin center. So in order to enable this feature, you will have to go to case settings below the customer support area, right? Here you can see customer support and here are my case settings. And then we'll go to case handling time preview. You're going to click here on manage and then you're going to enable this case, right? This enable case handling time and then you're going to go ahead and save that. And then here we have an update interval and this has everything to do with that automatic time tracking. And I'm going to come back to that in a second because how this works, it really has to do with the app that you're using. Now, another thing that you might want to do is actually put that widget, that control 
on that case form, right? And I'm really talking about what you saw earlier, right? That, that time tracking widget. So in order to do that, we're going to go to make.powerapps.com. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. So here you can see I have opened a case form and now I can add the widget, the time tracking widget here to my form. And that's actually pretty easy. It doesn't matter where you put it on the form because you saw earlier, right? It will just show up. It's not really actually sitting on that form. So what I've done here, you can see here that I've already added it. But in order to do that, what you're going to do is let me actually go ahead and, and remove this. I'm going to go ahead and remove this so you can kind of see what I did. I'm going to, let's just go ahead and put this in a separate section here. I have a one column section here, and then I'm going to put a subgrid on there. And those are going to be the related records. And then you're going to think, okay, what related records? Well, we're looking for a new table that's called time trackers. Because yes, when we're automatically tracking that time, that's actually done by rows in the time trackers, right? That's that new table that's been added for the time tracking purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and here's my time trackers. And you can just leave this to all time trackers. I'm going to go ahead and click on done. And here you can see my grid. So I'm going to call this time tracking, right? And then you can just hide that label. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, go and select that grid. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to scroll all the way down. I'm going to click on components and I'm going to look for the handling time component. And if you don't see it in this list, you can just click here on get more components and then you can just search it from within here, check it and then click add and that will put it here in this list. Now here, there's not a lot you have to do here. I'm just going to leave this as is, and then I'm going to click on done. And that's how you can add that widget or that control to your form. Again, it doesn't matter where you put it because you saw that it was just almost, you know, sitting on top of my form, right? So that's how you do that. Make sure you save and publish. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go back here. Now, again, I already kind of mentioned, right? There's going to be different behavior depending on the app that we're using. So let's talk about that. So you saw me doing that demo using the customer service workspace app, right? Which is that multi-session app. So a couple of things here. Um, the multi-session app actually uses that time interval. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Now, the way that works is the time tracking data is first stored in the browser. Because remember, we have a time interval, right? So we're not actually saving a time tracker record to Dataverse until those 10 minutes have passed, right? So that's what I'm saying when I'm saying uses a time interval. The time tracking data, those first like nine minutes or up to 10 minutes, I should say almost, right? All that data is first stored in the browser. And then when 10 minutes have passed, when we hit that first interval of 10 minutes, then we're actually creating a time tracker row, right? Inside of Dataverse, right? Now, the other thing that's important is because we are using the, the, the browser to actually store that data right first before we are actually saving that into Dataverse, that's why we don't require the widget for that automatic time tracking. The widget is just for us to view that. But even if you would not configure that, it would still track that automatic time, right? So that's very, very, very important to understand. Let me just give you a scenario here, right? So our time interval for all of my scenarios I'm going to talk about today is going to be 10 minutes. So let's say John is using customer service workspace. He opens a newly assigned case. He then works for six minutes and then he closes the case window, right? So what happens? Remember that time interval is 10 minutes. So those records are not created until 10 minutes have passed. So what actually happens, right? Let's say, let's take a look here. 
right? So four minutes later, a new time tracker is created with the data that was stored in the browser, capturing those six minutes that John worked, right? Interesting, right? Now have, we have another scenario. John opens another case and then he works for 12 minutes and then he closes the browser completely. What's going to happen now, right? So he's going to go in here. He's going to close that browser for those 12 minutes, right? So let's take a look here. So the time tracker, because John worked 12 minutes and after 10 minutes, right? That time tracker is being created because that interval was hit. That happens, right? But then he closes his browser. So the remaining two minutes are not tracked because again, he closed his browser. So all of that data is gone. So keep that in mind. That's very, very important. Now, when we're talking about single session apps, they're actually not using that time interval, right? Another thing that's important to know is that for those single session apps, the widget actually handles the automatic time tracking. So previously I was talking about the multiple session apps where I said that the time tracking data was stored in the browser. That is not the case with single session apps. The time tracking is handled by the widget. So the time tracker is created or updated, right? Immediately when an action happens. So if somebody opens a case for the first time, the widget automatically creates that time tracking record. If somebody worked on a case previously, it will actually uh, update the existing time tracker that is there. Cause you're probably going to think, okay, so each time, uh, wh whatever app I'm using, is it going to generate new time tracking records? It is not. You will only have one time tracking record per agent, right? If you have multiple agents working on a case, then you can have for each individual agent, you can have a time tracker record on there. So now let's talk about the single session apps, right? Because these are actually not using the time intervals. And the other thing that's very important is that the widget that you see on the screenshot here as well, the widget is actually taking care of all of the automatic time tracking. So if you are not configuring that widget or that control on your case form, then the time will not be tracked. So that's very important to understand. So let's take a look here at the scenario. We already said, right? Time interval is 10 minutes. Again, it doesn't matter because we're working on a single session app, right? Lisa opens a case that's been newly assigned to her for the first time. She then works on it for six minutes and then she closes the case window. So what happens under the covers, right? After Lisa opened the case record, immediately the system creates a time tracker record, right? Then when Lisa closes the case, the time tracker is then updated with those six minutes. So you can see here again, that it's not using the time interval, but it's actually utilizing that control, right? To generate those time tracker records. So that is very, very important to, uh, to understand, right? So there's some other scenarios as well when the time tracking stops. And here you can see all of those different scenarios. I will actually also put this in the comment section of this video, right? So here you can see all the different scenarios, either in the customer service workspace app, right? Or in the customer service hub, right? So in customer service hub, as long as the case is in focus, the timer runs. And if you close or refresh the browser or you navigate to a different table or a different case form, the timer stops. Now I actually asked the PM, okay, what if I navigate to a different case form that does have that control enabled on that case form? Will it also stop? And they actually told me, no, if that's the case, pun intended, then the timer does not stop. It will continue on uh, right 
tracking that time. But you can see here, right, all the different things that you can see the cases open in a session. You select a related entity record that opens as an app tab. The timer continues to run for the case, right? The user closes a case that's open as a session or an app tab, the timer stops, right? You select a related case. It will actually pause the current timer and then will continue in the related case or in the child case, right? So make sure you kind of read through all of that as well. So you really understand how all of this works. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks for watching. Until next time.